Hi everyone. If you've ever had to manually package and upload apps to Intune, it can be slow and frustrating. Intune Brew does all that for you. It downloads the applications, adds the right details, for example, the application name, the bundle ID, as well as the application logo, and it uploads them automatically with just a few PowerShell commands. In this upcoming video, I will show you what Intune Brew can do, how it works, and how you can start using it right after this video. If you're managing macOS devices, this will save you a lot of time. So let me show you how it works in action. Let's start with the website. On the website, there is a quick start guide. And yes, it's just two commands that we have to run to get started with Intune Brew. And let me copy and paste those two. And you just have to open a PowerShell 7 session and paste those commands inside there. It will now go to the PowerShell gallery and install the latest version of Intune Brew. And then I will just have to execute Intune Brew and you will be presented by this here. And next we will have to connect to our Intune tenant. We have a couple of options to do so. I always recommend you to use the app registration just to boil down on the, on the permissions that you uh, need for Intune Brew and uploading at macOS applications. And for those, for the app registration, you have two options. Either use a certificate-based authentication, meaning you use a certificate thumbprint, for example, or you can also use the app registration with a secret. The last option is something um, if you want to test around with Intune Brew in your lab environment, or you just want to upload a single application, then you can use the third option. So I will use that option right here, and it will open up a Microsoft login window and will just log in with my account from my lab. And now I will be presented with the list of applications that Intune Brew currently supports. So Intune Brew has gone a very, very long way. And um, we included a lot of applications to be supported by Intune Brew. When I first started with this project, it was only 10 applications. So it made sense to visually show the applications inside this PowerShell terminal here. Now, as you can see with this long list, it's a bit chaotic and not so great user experience. But nevertheless, just to showcase you how the script works, I'm now logged into my Intune tenant and I just have to type in a name of the application that I want to upload. And I just type in Zoom, press enter, and then it will check for the latest version that's available for Zoom. And it will also check your Intune tenant and look for the application called Zoom. And in this case, which is a great example, it found a update for your application. So you do have Zoom in your tenant, but there is a new version available. What it will do now is if you proceed with this script and proceed with uploading Zoom, it will create a new application for this new version. So it makes it possible for you to test this new version on your pilot devices or test devices and then roll out step by step to all of the remaining devices, right? So I will just proceed with uploading Zoom. It downloads the application locally on your device. It will check the file hash just to make sure that, that it hasn't been tampered with, right? And then it will create an application in Intune and then it just proceeds with the role uploading to the Intune tenant. Great, so the upload is now finished. The script commits that file to your Intune tenant right now, and then it will finally upload the application logo as well. So if you open up the Intune portal, it's pretty easy to do that because the URL to that application is also provided. So let me open my Intune tenant here. And then I will see the application has been already uploaded. I see under properties that I have a couple of things already filled out for me. Basically the application name, which is important, right? The description is already filled out. A information URL is filled out and I have an application logo. So what I can do is now I just can start with assigning this application as available, for example. Um, to a couple of users in my environment, and then I can offer them the application to be installed by the company portal. The detection rules basically is also provided by just having this bundle ID and the app version included. So basically, 
that's it and i could just end this demo right here but there's a lot of more things that i will show you guys especially on that website so if you go back to the website there is a list of applications that intune brew currently supports and let me just show you the list here here on the page for the supported applications you can either just scroll down or you can just use the search box here at the top so let me search for teams for example yeah, microsoft teams and webex teams in this case both are being supported there's also the sign in button here on the website so let me click on that what i wanted to do is minimize the work that you have to do inside a powershell session instead use a web portal for the tasks so you can either log in with a github account or with your google mail account or you can also use any other email address that you want to use to log in in my case i will just use my github account to log in and then i will be presented by my account page after signing into intune brew with your github google mail or whatever account you will see a tenant connection part on that on that my account page here and it basically tells we are signed into intune brew but we are not signed into the intune tenant this is something that i have separated because of security reasons, everything you do on Intune Brew's website inside this portal stays inside your website session, in your, in your browser session. So when I close Edge, it will disconnect from the tenant. There is no server or something that stores any of your Intune data. I have made it easy to connect to your Intune tenant. You will have to provide an application ID, a tenant ID, and a client secret. You can basically copy and paste those values from your app registration, from your Azure portal. Here's a import credentials button. And if you click on that, you can select a JSON file that has those values already inside. So let me just show you how a JSON file would look like. So there's always a key and value pairs. So the app ID, the tenant ID and client secret. This is something that's specifically for my tenant. So use this as a template, for example. Just replace the values here on the right side, which are green, with the correct values from your tenant. But for my example, this is the required information that I need to connect to my tenant. And I will just click on that import credentials button and use that JSON file here. And then as you can see, it will fill out those required informations automatically. And then you just click on con connect to your tenant and then that's it. So now we are connected to my Intune Lab tenant. In my account page, if you're not logged in, the view available updates and view dashboard are basically grayed out or disabled because, I mean, it makes no sense to check for updates if I'm not connected to my tenant. But now that I'm connected to my Intune tenant, I can just click on view available updates and then it will check in real time and search for updates that are available for applications that you have in Intune. And it found two updates for Miro and for Spotify. Clicking on the update now button on each specific application will give you a guideline to how to update this application in your tenant. And if you have Intune Brew already installed, as I showcased you in the beginning of this video, you can just run this second part of the guide which is Intune Brew upload and then the application name. So let's just copy it. Let's get back to my PowerShell session here, copy and paste it inside. And then it will ask me for the sign in again to my Intune tenant. This time, because I have that already prepared, I can use the second option, the app registration with secret, pick out the JSON file that's already been prepared. And now it it's logging in and it's updating Miro automatically. This streamlines this process a bit more because of this parameter called upload. It just knows, hey, I can upload the application without asking for any permissions to do so. So while it does this in the background, I want to show you a second thing. So let's say you don't want to upload or update each specific application one by one. There's also an option called update all. And if you click on that, you will see a new parameter called update all. So if you copy and paste that into a portal and look at that, Miro is already finished uploading. So let's use update all. Let's sign in with our secret again. 
and then it will now go through your tenant and it will check again for available updates. And um, if it finds new updates, it will upload that automatically as well. Great, so while it does that in the background, we can refresh this list here and we just uploaded the new versions of Miro. So the website now checked the Intune tenant and it recognized, hey, there's already the latest version. So it doesn't display it here. So back to the account, there's another option which is called dashboard. This will display a couple of key facts about your macOS applications in Intune. It will show you the total apps that are available in Intune currently, the number of updates that are available, your average time to update a application. And if you use that portal for a longer time, you will also see a monthly change in the number of application updates and that are available in percentage. But more interestingly, here are the applications that I have in my tenant currently, right? And I could just click through it and see, hey, most of them are up to date. If I want to update Spotify in this case, I can again I click on that update button and it will just make it possible for me to just copy and paste this parameter to upload Spotify. So let's go back to the account because there's one more thing that I want to show you is the notifications part. And if you click on this little button here called manage notification preferences, you will be forwarded to a new page. This is something I have built in because I don't want to check for updates manually. I just want to be notified when new updates are available for specific applications. So if I have, for example, let's check for Teams again. So if I have Teams in my tenant, I just want to be notified when there's a new update available, I can enable this button right here. And when the script that checks for the updates every 20 hours finds any new version for Microsoft Teams, it will send out a email automatically to that of your account. So it's really nice to have those things automatically generated for you. You don't have to search for any updates manually. And if you're done with setting up all of those things, you can just either click disconnect here or you can just click on the top right and sign out there.